Um, so our next speaker is um, Simon Hefti. He's originally trained as a space engineer. Then he saw the light, he became a data scientist, and he co-founded D1, the data science consultancy, whose president he is today. Simon's clear vision um, of the power of technology is obvious in the company's name. Um, trusting that D1 would one day be Googleable took a lot of guts when the company was founded 10 years ago. So um, with that, welcome on stage, um, Simon Hefti. Thanks, Bob, for this kind introduction. Thanks, everyone, uh, for your interest in creating value from data. Uh, observing lions during their hunt is really awe-inducing. I'm always frightened and fascinated at the same time. And today I want to explore what we humans, when creating value, can learn from how lions go about their business. The price for lions, of course, is food and ultimately survival. And the question is, what is the price for humans and organizations when they create value from data? And essentially, if you boil it down, there are four ways of how you can extract value from data. And the first one is through increasing sales. This is most often done through customer analytics, where things like campaign selections and next best actions then lead to increased sales. A second way of creating value from data is through reducing cost. And reducing cost is quite often done through automation, but not automation in the mechanical uh, sense of automation, but in actually automating business processes, which means you need to help taking decisions. You actually have to automate the process of decision taking uh, when working with data for things like credit scores or credit approvals, or also for discounts for, for customers and so forth. The third way of creating value from data is through reducing risk. And typically, this is achieved by producing early warning signs. The early warning signs give us reaction time. And with the reaction time, we can take measures uh, to mitigate the risk which we have discovered. So the third way of creating value is detecting risks as early as possible. And we know that machine learning is excellent for that and use that information to act on it. And there is a fourth way of creating value from data. And that's the most fascinating one, but also the most challenging one. Uh, that's creating or opening up new business lines. Uh, for example, you have a data product. You have a machine learning system, which you can repeatedly use. You can offer it as a subscription-based service to your clients to use in different scenarios, not just one-off, but repeatedly. And uh, out of a project where you first try to solve a problem, like we have heard today already many times, you create a new business line by offering this service to the clients uh, for, for, for a fee. So that's the price uh, we get from from data when we try to create value, or that's the price we want to achieve if we uh, create value from data. And as we know, uh, hunting is also dangerous. The cost for lions uh, of a hunt, of an un unsuccessful hunt, is let the lionesses get wounded or even killed during the hunt itself. But even if they don't get killed, they have expended quite a lot of energy uh, which makes them weaker for the next hunt. So the cost can be starvation and um, the risk of survival. survival. For us work as humans working to create value from data, the danger is not as imminent. For the organization, it still remains quite high. So as, as an organization, if you don't succeed in realizing value from data, it can well mean that you go out of business. So it can be life-threatening as well, but the danger is not as immediately seen. So how do we know that working with data is actually a challenge? Well, in very much the same way as we know challenging things in other domains, we see people try it and fail while, while doing it. Well, the word seeing is maybe a little bit exaggerated. You very clearly see if an airport building is failing. You very clearly see if a bridge is failing. Data projects are a little bit below the radar. It needs a trained A to 
eye, it needs a trained eye to see uh, the extent, the amount, the size of uh, a project which tries to create value from data. But you are the experts. You have seen uh, attempts which have failed, and from this you have concluded that actually working with data is not something you do in a uh, Sunday afternoon. It's actually something you prepare for, and that translates into something which is challenging. And what is needed then in order to succeed? And the first thing is, if the challenge is bigger than yourself, for the lionesses, the buffalo they try to hunt is six times as heavy, or about six times as heavy as themselves. So it's very clear they need a team. And the same is true when we work with data. We need teams. We need to put together teams which are capable of attacking the size of the challenge which is ahead of them. Actually, not all the lines do hunt buffalo. Some have, have tried and have realized that's too hard for us and moved to something else. They still survive. So it doesn't have to be buffaloes, but uh, nevertheless, you need to team up. But teaming up is not sufficient. You need skilled teams. Those lions know their moves. They know how to have in behave in different scenarios. And what you need in order to succeed when working with data is exactly the same thing. You need trained lionesses, or you need trained um, data scientists, and data experts who are skilled in what they are doing. But being skilled is even not sufficient. You need to do it on a daily basis. Look at the muscles of those lionesses. You know, it's really the energy radiates out of this image. You can clearly see what is coming towards you here. And the same is true when you work with teams. You need teams who are on the ground, who do that work on a daily basis, who have not gotten lazy and, and fat. And finally, what you need, and I believe this is the most important thing, is you need focus. And yeah, again, you can see that in uh, pride, which is on the verge of attacking you. You know, you're <laughs> I don't want them to be in that position, but if you see that, you can really feel the energy which is coming towards you. So it's quite clear what is needed, uh, but what happens in order? Um, why is it happening that we don't achieve that kind, the same level of focus? Of course, we don't have the immediate threat of survival in front of us, but the main reason why we are not focused is because there are distractors. And I want to talk about three distractors today. The first one is having too much technology choices. Matt Tuck has put together this image, you all know it well, has spent a lot of, of time to put together the big data landscape. But this data landscape is actually a liability. We have too many choices. We can easily get lost in the maze of all the available possibilities we have. And that's what happens to organizations, right? They, they, they follow individual threads. They are very curious, as they should be, and they, they get loose of the side of the buffalo of the price which can be reached. Um, at D1, we work with many clients, and they have systems on-prem, relational systems, data lake host systems. They work in the cloud, on Azure, on GCP, on AWS, and so forth. All of that is fine. You know, all those technology stacks deliver what they need to deliver, so there is no challenge there. But my point is, if those clients would have chosen the same stack, all would have cho chosen the same stack, they still would be able to deliver the value. So the technology is an enabler, but it's not a differentiator. And what's worse, it actually creates a lot of distraction. Think of, of technology like going from A to B. You want to go there comfortably, you want to go there in time, and the rest is all taste, right? If you want a new car or an old car, if it brings you there, all is fine. The rest is taste. So make a choice. The second distractor is blurry requirements. Uh, not understanding what is actually needed. Of course, you can't do a technology selection if you don't have a clear view of what the requirements are. But let's take the privacy we just talked about earlier, pseudonymization. If you don't understand what's really needed there, you can sink any, any conversation on creating value from data with that topic. I'm not saying pseudonymization is not important. Quite on the contrary, it is important. But what's more important is you need to understand what is required. Are humans looking at the result of the pseudonymization? So should the names still be recognizable as names, or should they look technical? Should the statistic, statistical properties be preserved, as, as we uh, heard before? 
or should that not be? And how about repetitive use of the pseudonymization? Should always a new result be produced or should the same result be uh, preserved? All those questions are important to tackle, to, to get to the bottom of it. If you don't, you have distraction, you lose focus and ultimately you lose the, the goal and the prize you can get. And the third element to keep in mind is the human factor. We are all humans and we behave and act as humans and I mentioned decision automation earlier and um, the question with decision automation which is Im imminent and you will definitely hear is what about me? What happens to my job? Will my job be automated away in a couple of years as well and how do I try to prevent that? How do I co counteract that? You might have ethical questions involved um, about your own values or is the data used in a way which I can agree to or from a company standpoint is the company using the data in a way which is in line with the brand with the with the trust the customers give the, the company um, so that's an important aspect to to address and finally um, we all want to shine we all want to advance our careers we want to create success which makes us go to the next level. And if this is threatened, then you have a huge distractor in the room and people will obviously uh, find ways of hindering the progress of the project, which will then uh, lead to a loss of the possible reward of the possible price you can get. So understanding the distractors is straightforward, right? It's easy to get the view of these and it's also quite straightforward to understand what is needed to counteract on those distractors. So why don't we use it more? Of course we don't have this immediate need of the survival pressure like the lions have so that's one reason but I think the more important reason is it requires courage. See we humans have the tendency to avoid hard problems and instead of attacking or thinking about a hard problem going the easy way and choosing topics which are easier to handle, like discussing technologies, like bringing in requirements which nobody really understands, like uh, working on personal advances, and work on those topics rather than attacking the big one. And one of the big such examples is alignment on data structures. The cost of avoiding this, and that's happening more often than, than not, is quite high as we have seen at the onset of the pandemic when we realized that data exchange was based on fax machines. Um, currently, we, D1 is helping uh, the Swiss construction industry to put together a data model which would, will accompany a building over the entire life cycle from the initial idea over the building stage, the operation stage, up to the uh, destruction stage. And think about all the professions which need to come to collaborate on those topics and, how, and need to align on a common view on how this data should be represented, that's really hard work. And you need to go through the questions which arise in that process in order to come to a result which then is worthwhile uh, using. And I um, wanted to mention, but I forgot to mention what I mean by value creation earlier by illustrating this through a project which we did in Abu Dhabi for, for a health insurance. There we built a system which is creating value on the order of the original investment on a year-to-year -year basis. So you actually get back with the value creation. That's the price you are trying to seek, uh, the same amount uh, which you need to invest in order to reach, reach that goal. And the foundation in order to be, po to be able to do that in this particular project was again very solid data structures, in this case prescribed and induced by the regulator and also enforced by the regulator. So as a pharmacy, if you don't submit your claim within 24 hours in a digital form, you don't get paid. And that, of course, then creates the data structures and the data availability, which is required to do projects like that. So what I think is uh, in order to succeed um, in creating value from data, what you need is focus. And in order to fo create that focus, you need courage, courage to address all the ways to get distracted. Look at the technology, take your pick and then commit, use that technology. 
go to the bottom of the requirements. Don't get distracted by blurry requirements. And finally, make sure you have an environment where you have clever and creative team playing. Thanks so much for your attention. <laughs>